So, I want to talk about Senate Bill 22. Sometimes what happens, uh, and I've found in life, that the harder people try to make things good, it, it does nothing to cause them to get The Senate Bill 22 is, is real nice in as much as they've tried to come up with a way to help law enforcement and also the uh, all the way up to the, the uh, Roy's office, the, the VA's office. Some of the things that they didn't take into consideration, in my opinion, is how to act adequately or, or fairly separate this out to smaller counties. For example, Lockwood like County, we have a, a, a relatively large jail for our uh, population. And so we will get $350,000, but what we'll to try to divide that between around 22 or so deputies and 30, uh, 42 jailers. Uh, anyway, the bottom line is. Uh, Someone like Freestone may not have to separate that, that, that money that many. Uh, Leon County uh, may not have to separate it. And so what ultimately happens is you start worrying about what's going to happen to your department, even though you were trying to do as good as you could, what will happen? If Leon County is able to now give, because they have less deputies than we do, or Freestone has less deputies, they'll give their deputies more money than we can give ours and trying to be fair. Uh, then our deputies may go there, and at the same time, the police stations uh, are trying to keep up with the county, and so it becomes a vicious circle, if you will. Once again, the intent was to be as fair as we can be, uh, and the state was trying to be as fair as we can be. Same way in Roy's office. Right? Roy's got, uh, you know, four uh, or three other uh, assistants. Uh, he has an investigator and a victim's coordinator. Uh, other counties don't have as many, our size don't have as many assistants, and so we even more fair than them. I mean, not more fair. They can get more. They can get more money out of it. I should say. So again, not really fair. So what I did was I took a look, and if you look at the uh, what I'm proposing, uh, I made y'all a copy of it. Uh, the sheriff came to my office probably about a month ago, I guess, and he said that we needed, uh, I think, I think about sixty-eight thousand for the. Uh, uh, deputies and around 100,000 for the jailers. Well, I got good news. The good news for the, for the county is, is we didn't even hear that. And that's because the commissioner's court have, uh, have basically always tried to do what they could for our law enforcement. The, the problem that you run into is that at some point in time, you can try to stay for political reasons, and I hate to say that the democracy of the political world is in it. Uh, is that we have to try to make sure that we're doing what we can also to make sure we, we look like we're not trying to not to uh, uh, do what we can for law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement is very important on the minds of a lot of people right now, but on the same token, I say, because I've said this many times, right now as a taxpayer in Limestone County, if they were to come out and say, we want to do uh, both to give every child who graduates one to school a new car, would you be in favor of it? She said, no, I wouldn't be in favor of that. They said, well, are, you, are you against the kids? Well, same thing with law enforcement. We do what we can with the monies that we have coming in and 
try to make it fair for everybody. Uh, but if we don't do exactly what's asked sometimes, it might give the appearance that you're anti law That's certainly not the case. If you'll look, uh, on the one that said uh, starts off with the sheriff there, that's uh, uh, this page here. Um, Limestone County got, uh, we'll be getting $350,000. We're going to retro that as of October the 1st. You know, from what I understand, it goes back to October the 1st. I called and visited with the state comptroller's office twice, actually, to get the exact details that I had to get in order to do this. To give an example, the sheriff, uh, current base pay is $59,850. That's right now he's making around $30 uh, and eight cents an hour or thereabouts. If you added in uh, his longevity, he's up to 64860 And one of the things that I was told is that you can't add that longevity because that's actually what we're paying him for us. So it's not it's not a, a base in addition to that. It's a, it's what the Limestone County is asking their uh, taxpayers to pay, and that's what things we pay uh, in that longevity. Nonetheless, that still would not affect the uh, what we have to come up with, to be frank with you, because the minimum uh, is not there for the sheriff. Uh, the total that we're going to come up with the sheriff is seventy five thousand, and that's the minimum we have to come up with. If you go down and look at every other uh, officer before you even count the longevity, uh, every one that we have is over the 45,000. So I don't know where the sheriff came up with 60 something thousand we need, but basic right now, what we're paying, if you didn't take in the longevity, certification pay, that's all money that we actually pay out of Limestone County. Okay? So we we're, we're never told him no except for one $1 raise since I've been the sheriff. I mean, the county kind of judge, frankly speaking. So, if we took and gave the top tier, uh, and I don't want to use the word freely, but the upper echelon people a 7% raise, uh, that would you'll see the figures right there, what that would do to where we're at in the county. If you took, and the idea is, is that we, we're, we're doing good with CID, uh, sergeants, uh, upper echelon captains, We've got plenty of those. What we don't have plenty of is deputies. We can't ever keep that. One of the reasons we don't keep deputies is we will move them up to these higher uh, paid positions in an effort, I think, trying to keep them. And I get that. However, the deputies, starting with uh, Deputy Rhodes on down, are actually the deputies that we're hoping to get more of when we keep these positions filled. And so at that point, uh, I went in there and figured out an 8% raise for those uh, jailers. So, another thing that I'll point out to you is that if you continue to do a straight percentage rate, the disparity between the upper echelon and the lower echelon is greater and greater and greater. And so, the, uh, by doing this, by going to this right here, that is about as fair as I can find the way to do it. It gets every deputy up to over $24 an hour uh, pay. Uh, that being the case, I'll lay that in now. Uh, but we only needed 10000 a little over $10,000 out of that, uh, that, we, that we weren't already making the minimum. If you go to the jail, and this is the jail is the one thing that has always hurt Montreal County. I mean, it's, it kills us. We, the amount of money that we have to spend to keep the jail going. And frankly, the jail was never meant for taxpayers to have to pay this. Uh, not, uh, not at all. It was always designed with the monies that we're paying to keep that jail uh, was for LCDC to pay it. As we all know, it didn't happen. So, based on that, if you'll look over there on the very left side where it says current base, this is the base pay of the jailers right now. The state says that we have to be up to uh, 40000 That's the minimum. If you can look over where it says needed for minimum, it says we need $10,445. Now, I was told we needed over 100,000, and I don't know where that number, number came from, so I'm glad that I did the math to find this out. Once again, if you get up into the uh, uh, a little bit of higher echelon of people working over there, um, I recommend that they get a 7%, and then starting with the traders all the way down, I recommend an 8%. Now, the good news is that if what I'm proposing then would do this right here. And, and I know the argument will be made at some point in time that you, you don't uh, uh, 
Uh, how can you not give everybody what the county's actually giving in a raise? Well, we've done that many times, to be frank with you. Uh, Jerry, I'll ask you, have we ever given other people raises that we didn't give some of your people? No. We never, we, we never gave uh, uh, other people raises where your people didn't get raises, is what I'm trying to say. I know it's happened, but I just want to ask you. There's been time that it's happened. it's happened. So the same thing with, with other departments that we, that we try to adjust pay to get paid where we can get it done. Now, if we lived in a perfect world and everybody's job was the identical, same job, and there was no difference in it, then we could maybe take a look at that a little bit harder. Unfortunately, I don't get that money. So by letting the state of Texas come out and said, we want to help you, the counties out. We want to help the counties out to get their deputies in law enforcement up to a minimum standard. By, by, doing, by doing what I've just done, or what I'm proposing to do, and of course, y'all get the chance to uh, turn that down, we all win. We're going to win in as much as the, the law enforcement is going to get a nice raise this year, a very nice raise, mainly thanks to the state. Uh, Roy's office is going to get a very nice raise. Thanks to the state. We, I ask what can happen to the rest of the, uh, of the employees within the county. Four uh, percent is a, was something that we had talked about, but I have found a way that if we let the state take care of us in one way, we're able to give people like the people in Jerry uh, Road Bridge out there that are working in the 106, 78 degree temperature a little bit more money. So on this big uh, sheet right here, this long sheet that you see right here. Natasha came in and, uh, and was able to figure out what it would be if we were to make that change. And the good news is that we could be able, we would be able to give one more percent raise to all the county employees and get all the county employees up to five percent. In addition to say the taxpayers over sixty thousand dollars in dividends. So not only would law enforcement get a raise, the rest of the county would get a, a decent cost of living raise, but the taxpayers would, would get a savings over what we talked about just the other day. And so that's what I'm going to be presenting. I wanted you all to uh, know what it was that I'm going to be presenting today. We have to get this family today. I think it's never uh, talking to you. A proposed. A proposed. At that point in time, then we'll start talking about whatever else. Now, keep in mind, that's let the state also buy us uh, $100,000 worth of vehicles, two vehicles. I know I talked with Roy, and uh, Roy, I don't want to speak for you specifically, but when I went to Roy and asked him his thoughts about what I was trying to do, he said he saw why I was trying to do that. Uh, that being said, uh, I, 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 wasn't able, I didn't talk to the sheriff about it, but uh, anyway, bottom line is, uh, this is a way that we can make it. This is something that I worked on. I promise you, for Sean Dunn not in here, but I know I was at four o'clock this morning. And I worked on this for hours upon hours upon hours, trying to find a way to make this fair for everybody in line. So, is there any questions to me from y'all on what I am proposing? Judge, may I ask a question? No. <laughs> My budget, Judge. We're, okay, Murray, I'm not talking right now. We're having a meeting of the Lionsville County Commission. If you want to ask you a question. I understand, but I think we'll I do it to, we'll do explain it. something to you. I don't, I don't need it, Murray, right now. You know, back to the rude as you were the other day, I'd like to keep this uh, just the commissioner's court right now. Uh, I'm, I'm presenting this, doesn't matter what you want to say, I'm presenting this as it is today. And then, as you will do, we'll go to each one of them individually and you can change, try to change their mind. But right now, no. Does the commissioners have anything they want to talk about on a special meeting? I do have a question. You had said that there was like a sixty thousand dollar savings um, yes. to the taxpayers. No, exactly. Can you explain that? Yes. Or, what happened was we 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 looked at doing an overall four percent for everybody. Right. Well, if you look at it then with what the state is going to come out and give us, I, I didn't think that it would be uh, feasible for us to have to ask our taxpayers. To give not only that three fifty that are basically two fifty because we're taking hundred vehicles, but just to get them to the minimum when we'd already come to the minimum. So what happened was I took that out of the proposal of four percent of 
the law enforcement and of the DA's office. By taking that 4% out, then I was able to give everybody else 1% raise, and then in addition, we had money left over that we could give back to the taxpayers. Does that make sense to me? Based on what we originally did at 4%, 4% we would cost us the, the basically uh, 250 plus another uh, 85, 89. So this gave us a little bit of this one. And I will say this, uh, I'm not saying that if any of y'all want to ask Murray a question, it's, 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 it's an open meeting, but it's not an open forum, but it's y'all's meeting. So I know I'm not going to hear what you have to say, Murray. Okay, sir. I'd like to hear what you have to say. I'm not going to hear what That doesn't factor in the fact that with these bigger raises, the Social Security and the, that's what's the same point, 6 percent and the retirement is going to be the tax. Yeah, back plus. Yes. Yeah, so go ahead. Well, let me, let me address that real quick. The comptroller said that as it stands right now, we cannot call this a stipend. It has to be called payroll. The second thing is they have not made a decision yet on whether we can withhold a little bit of money uh, in order to cover our FICA uh, and our retirement and our workers' comp if the additional money is going to cost. Okay. So, okay. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, first up, I, I understand what the judge is trying to do. And what he's trying to do is not a whole lot different than what we had talked about in his office a month ago. Also, what I talked to you all about. What's going to happen with his plan if you use it, the SB 22 money to make the, the step up, which we were going to use anyway, in addition? What's going to happen is two, three, four years down the road. That money is committed right there to the salaries. You're not going back to changing that. Also, if by chance that grant goes away, which the judge even said, hey, it may go away two or three, four years in a row. It may. We don't know. It just changes on a deal. When that happens, you lose that money. If you're depending on that money to make the salaries equal to the surrounding areas, now all of a sudden you're behind again two, three, four dollars. Right now, Fremont, Riesel, Mahea, Grossbeck, everybody else is already two dollars, almost two dollars ahead of us, and it's going to be more after this money. So with the 4% of the county's offering, that's 88 cents per option. If you even add a dollar or two to that, you still have money to purchase vehicles, equipment, things that we need without taxpayer costs. But you're competitive, which was the whole intent of the bill. You're competitive with the surrounding areas. And if that money goes away, you're still, you're below them, but you're still competitive. What you're trying to do with the judge's plan is use that money to elevate the money, and it's all there until it's gone. And then all of a sudden you're four, five, six dollars an hour behind and you can't keep it. And so we're we're on the same ideas. And like I told you, we're not going to get out of line from any of the surrounding agencies. That's not our goal. My goal is to be competitive with them. My goal is to be right there with them or just a little ahead of them. And then let our department, the people in the court speak with the rest of them. And that's what I think we should do. Thank you. Well yes, sir. If that goes away, say in three or four years, and we've done the say the eight the eight percent or whatever, that would just remain. We wouldn't be taking that away from anyone at that point. It would just have to be budgeted in to remain at that. It would be, but let's say four or five, six years down the road, you don't know what's going to be going on. I don't know what's going on. We're going to be in a recession, or we're going to be on top. We're going to have a different administration. What's going to be going on with your taxes? Are they going to roll stuff back? Are they going to cut stuff? We don't know. So if you depend on this money to make up the tax difference right there off the bat, then you're putting yourself in a hole when the money goes away. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Right, let me say something about that then. First off, the, the idea that no matter if you, if we gave every dime of that 350 till, then we'd be worse shape than I would because then you would not only give them the four percent that we we're going to give, plus you're going to give them the other eight, seven, or eight percent that we we're going to give. So you're going to be worse. That's what you're proposing at two dollars per deputy, one dollar per jail, right? With the four percent. My goal was if we get a two percent for the four percent raise, I had figured three percent because that's what we had talked about originally. Then yes, I was planning on taking a dollar an hour and adding to the jail up to $2 an hour to add to the law enforcement, 
that would put us right there at that 24, 2450 category on the deputies. That would put us within 25 cents of the LCDC behind us, and maybe I can feel the people drive by the bikes right now. The LCDC is paying over two dollars an hour more. The LCDC is giving a sign on bonus. They're giving bonuses after you've been there for six months. They're giving bonuses if you bring people out there to go to work. So we've got to compete with that. So using the tax money and using the county budget as as we do every year, and then taking that money and adding a dollar or so on there puts us in that category without burdening the tax. Where's the judge in his own words at the meeting on July 20, whatever it was, said the county needs, we have the money to do the uh, cost of living rate. And the employees need that to keep working. Otherwise, we're going to run out of work. That was in the night of April. So I mean, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to work with the so court. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. What are you saying that you'd like to see? Uh, currently, your deputy would be 2252. So if you could get almost $2 an hour rate, you'd be happy with it? I'm trying. What I'm trying to ask, would that be good? Well, kind of what you're planning on, and what I'm planning on two different deals. What you're planning on is using just that money to get there. What I'm planning on doing is using that 4% cost of living raise, 3%, whatever you all vote on. Using that, keeping the 1033 money separate, just like we've talked about before. Then as we go through a year down the road, two years down the road, we go back and give a raise or do whatever, it's on the county base salary. And the base salary doesn't take your longevity and all in. That's not what it is. Your base salary is the base. No, no, no. So you take that base salary and then you add, then every time for years you have figured the raises on the base salary, that is not the right. I get that, but the, the, the bottom line when I said that we included longevity is that is the base plus additional that we pay. And some people, that's quite a bit right. Longevity is for your years of service with the county. But it's still something we pay. It's yeah. still it's still uh, figured into an hourly rate. You're going to take it out and do the base salary. But that, that's a split in hairs on So hand. right now, if you were to get uh, two dollars, uh, and, and most most of what's happening is everyone's getting over two dollars, right at two dollar an hour rate. As a matter of fact, some of the people in the upper echelon, as you know, will get more than two dollar an hour rate. Uh, I'm just asking the question. Uh, but could we just could, could, could we just, the judge has a proposal. Yes, sir. Could we just move to, we have a motion to accept that or not? Well, you, well, you could do that. I mean, I want to present it, and I'm just hoping that we can think about all the rest of the employees in line from the county. Can I, can I address? Yes, sir. Go ahead. It's just it's an impact and all that will be. I'll let y'all go to your meeting. Senate Bill 22. Um, uh, and the judge, I appreciate you letting me talk. Understand, gentlemen, this is a watershed event. The state, I've been here over 32 years in the county attorney's office. The state has never provided money like this. So I know it causes y'all some, some trouble um, when they do this, but this is like manna from heaven, okay, to help local, rural public safety offices compete. So and the, the rules haven't all been promulgated yet. And yes, I had a discussion with Judge Duncan. We talked about whether or not my office could forego their raises this year. We did discuss that. I also told Judge Duncan, I don't know that that's uh, allowable under Senate Bill 22. If you look on page six of that bill analysis, you'll see it says a county may not reduce the amount of funds provided to the prosecutor's office, the sheriff's office, or anything else because of grant funds provided under here. So while you have to keep in mind that we're doing, we're dealing with his office, which, which would affect over 60 people in my office, which affects five. So what may be palatable this year for one year to my office certainly may not be palatable to him. The rules haven't even been promulgated yet as to whether or not all, all of the taxes and everything come out. They'll publish that in the Texas Register come about the first week of September, the rules that the comptroller is coming up with, there'll be a comment period and we'll know more then, but I know y'all have to act now. So um, while, you know, it could be a small concession for the DA's office, might not be right for the sheriff's office. And I realize y'all got to add all that into the mix. Um, 
to come up with with what is equitable. What this legislature has said they're doing is helping rural law enforcement with this bill. And I realize that doesn't cover everybody. Just like we talked about, my staff up front is not covered, but it will help tremendously. I don't have an investigator right now. He, he left uh, two weeks ago for a county paying much more money than I pay him. This will help. I have had five victim coordinators in the last 12 years. And while the, well, the position does not require a college degree, she has a master's degree. And she does an excellent job, but she could leave at any time and go to work for a school district around here as a counselor and make more money. So this is truly um, a gift from the state that we have to use responsibly. And we don't know that we're going to get this money again in two years. This is grant money, not like the probation department where that's a writer and they're going to be funded that money. So um, I'm just saying my office is different from Murray's. I know y'all got to do a, an overall county budget um, for everyone, but um, what might be a small concession for my office will not be for the sheriff's office. So I want you to keep that in mind and keep in mind that Senate Bill 22 may not even allow you to forego that. I, I do not know the answer to that question. I can't give you that answer yet. Let me, Roy, uh, let me tell you, I asked that question. It's, uh, exactly and what they mean by that is, if we're paying 50000 this year, we can't reduce last year's budget, whatever last year's budget is, down to 45000 and use this money to get them back to where they were last year. That's what that, that's what that exact rule talks about. They, the comptroller told me in no uncertain terms that we have to meet this minimum and pass that, and the money has to be used for law enforcement. They said, as far as what we did in raisings on top of that, it's strictly the county's business. So, I appreciate that you mentioning that, but I mentioned to say something about that earlier. So anyway, I'm going to present this. Uh, the only other thing that I was going to talk about, and, and let me get back to the agenda. And, and all I can do is work to try to be as fair as we can. That's all we can do. And I don't think that y'all can... Anyway, I won't even talk about that anymore. Um, if y'all want to take any action on Senate Bill 22, on what I'm proposing, I don't think there's any action that really we need to take today. That's what I'm proposing to the, the your clerk's office to be recorded. That'll be the end of the day. Uh, so really there's no action really to be taken on item number six. On item number seven is discussing big action on the proposed budget. And really, I wish this would have said budget workshop. Uh, because there are some things that we do need to start talking about uh, and getting as soon as possible because we are going to run out of time. The, uh, but in a, in a nutshell, I'm, I'm, recommend, I'm going to recommend that we give 5% to everybody else to give the monies to the uh, Sheriff's Department as, a, as I've outlined here, uh, and then we give some money back to the taxpayers. So uh, at that point in time, is there any other comments on that? I, I'm happy to answer any because I don't want to fight about this. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of fighting, practically speaking. Um, is there anything else that, that y'all want to talk? All right, let's talk real quick about the uh, the, the the tax rate. Have y'all given any consideration? Judge, go ahead. We're not going to adopt tax rate today because we right. just, I mean, it's not an agenda to talk about tax rate. Can we just adopt our proposed budget? Yes. Well, uh, I mean, right. I'm not sure that that's even something we have to do as a as a as a crew. We got to take action on the proposed budget to submit as a proposed budget. Um, I don't think so. Do you well, know? The way y'all have it written up, with it as the agenda, I don't. I think you do on this. Well, I know we don't, but I, anyway, I'll let you do that. I know that right now, the county judge is responsible for presenting a proposed budget. At that point in time, then y'all, y'all want to vote on that. Uh, that's fine, but if that's if y'all vote it down, then we won't have a proposed budget today. Well, no, we got one. No, we we have the one that no, we, I have not, but I have not presented a proposed budget. I, I stopped it at the last meeting. I have to present a budget, Bobby. I have to present the budget. If not, then I don't have to do it ever again. Y'all can do it from now on. But I have to present a proposed budget. I know that is the way it is. I make the motion that we adjourn. 
We have a motion. Is there, is there a second before we go any further? Okay, that'll die. I'll make a motion that we adopt the proposed budget that we left the meeting on Tuesday, the 8th, with everybody in uh, agreement that the proposed budget, that I have a copy of it here, um, where we um, had agreed on the 4% raise. Uh, we had a uh, vehicle uh, amount in the Sheriff's Department. I make a motion that we adopt that as a proposed budget. That was what was to proposed to us on the 8th, and we adjourned on the 8th. Do you have a motion? It doesn't have to lack a second. Let me just say this, gentlemen. And, we, and actually, we have Chris Savage here. I uh, didn't even let him speak. He, he didn't understand, and he's got some questions and things that he wants to ask about to get on uh, the upcoming uh, budget. But Chris, in all fairness, we'll probably get past that today, and I'll visit with him about uh, he needs to be tracked out there. What I would recommend that we do is take no action on this, uh, even though I said discuss, it's just say and or take action on uh, Senate Bill 22. All I'm doing is, is because what happened at the last meeting, and I and I realized what we were doing, then I made I changed. I didn't ever I never filed. I went straight to the township and I said I'm not filing that budget that uh, I was going to present. But I presented a budget, but then I withdrew it. Now, now this is a new one that I'm presenting. Y'all, I don't think y'all have to take action on this. I just need to file what I'm proposing. Is all I think that's going to happen. As a matter of fact, I know it is already called. You told yeah, me you say a copy of that proposed budget. Oh, we saw I just showed you what the only two different, the only changes on the That's the reason I'm having this meeting is to tell you the difference. You didn't take the hundred thousand out for for equipment. I mean, for uh, sheriff's vehicles. It's that the only difference, the only difference to this is, is that we're not giving four percent rate raises to everybody. We're using the state's money to help us, to help taxpayers in Limestone County pay to get our law enforcement up to a higher level. In addition, we're able to use some of that money that we're going to use uh, for those departments to spread throughout the county to some of the other people that also need a cost of living raise. I think what would happen is if y'all would, we could just adjourn today. Uh, Don't you follow a proposed budget for that? She's going to follow when I'm proposing. What, what I have right here in front of everybody, because I didn't have all the judges' numbers, uh, knowing what he was proposing today is a salary. What this is right here is everything that was discussed in the last meeting. It has the 4% for everybody, it has the 300 for contingencies for Road and Bridge, the 100,000. For uh, the sheriff's vehicles, plus a thirty-seven thousand, which was the revenue from uh, a wrecked vehicle, so a total of one hundred thirty-seven thousand. Uh, it also has, in not broken out, but in the lines for the sheriff's department and the DA's office, the three hundred and fifty thousand for Senate Bill Twenty-Two and the hundred and seventy-five thousand. Um, that's what is in this one, based on everything that was discussed at the last meeting. And that's the one I'm making a motion that we. I make a motion to present that vote. That's what I just did. With my second. And this but I second your motion. This does not have the judges what he proposed or what he's submitting to y'all today as far as the sellers. That's not included in this one yet. Okay, Natasha, since you're going to be the one that's going to stand up and make this uh, argument, who has who is supposed to give the proposed vote? You present the proposal. I presented it. And when and I presented it, I changed it. I said, I don't want to do it. So I came back today to represent it because I wanted to change it. I have the right to do that. And I can tell you, I know for a fact I have the right to do that. But if y'all want to go ahead and judge, I'm going to see how we do. Was the motion made? And a second? Yes. Exactly. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. uh, all right. Uh, let's go down the road with Bobby. Uh -huh. Steve. Nay. Nay. Uh, no. Okay, so it will, that will not pass. And so now then what I would like to do is to give the uh, the changes that I have made that I asked you to have ready, uh, which you don't want to do, but I asked you to do it, to have that ready. And so I can present that back to the commissioner's court 
And so I'm asking you right now, that's what I'm going to follow. If y'all if want to go with this, fine. If you don't, y'all can change every bit of this at the very next meeting. If the next meeting, this is not final. This is not even close to being final. This is what I'm presenting to, to the commission. Y'all can change and say you want to give 350000 to Paul right there. Not Paul. You're not law enforcement. Someone that's in law enforcement. You can give every dime to whoever you want to give it to. This is just what I'm proposing. And so that's all I'm asking for today. I'm asking you to please. We're done. Huh? Well, the motion to uh, do that. Uh, we can do it in German. We can do it in German if y'all want to do that. What do we need to vote to adopt your budget with that stuff in it? Or do we not? I, mean, I don't care. No, for, you don't have to do that. What I've been told you, you do not have to, to vote on the proposed budget. That's just something that I have to propose. So, um, so my understanding, I will make the changes that you are proposing yes. to have. That's what will be. So basically, everything else stays the same. I'm just changing the salaries. That's right. Based on what um, he's given everybody. That's right. That's your proposed budget, and then that's and what then we'll be following. At that point in time, gentlemen, it becomes y'all's budget, and y'all change the character. So if we've got any other changes in there that are true, do we want to do those now so they'll be in the proposed budget, or we just don't no. This is just something that my next all I have to do. That, this is just a formality, frankly, in my opinion. This has nothing to do with the final budget. Other than it's just starting point, I guess. I'll move with John. Sir, you have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Aye.